Hey, good evening and welcome to the unincorporated Alameda County Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee meeting. My name is Amber Lowe. I'm the Principal Civil Engineer for the Transportation Division at Public Works. I'll be hosting tonight's meeting. Before we begin, um, let me go over um, the housekeeping announcements. Are you guys able to see the screen? Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're conducting tonight's meeting remotely via teleconference. The teleconference guidelines were provided with the agenda. If you experience any technical difficulties, you may call our help desk at 510-670-5755 for assistance. And um, public participants will have the opportunity to provide comments when I open public comments for each item on the agenda. And um, if you would like to provide comments, please raise your virtual hand and I will call on you. If you are joining by phone, you can raise your hand by dialing star nine. Um, each member of the public will have up to three minutes to speak. And I just wanna remind everyone that the meeting is being recorded. Okay, um, so first um, let's go over the agenda for tonight. Um, after I call the meeting to order, then we're gonna do a roll call for the committee members. Um, then we'll open it up for public comments on um, items that are not on the agenda. Then we'll have like a quick announcement about the BPAC roster. Then there will be um, the approval of the action minutes from the June 20, um, 23rd and September 22nd meeting, the last two meetings. And then um, we'll have two presentations tonight. Then um, uh, last we'll have the future um, agenda topic suggestions and then the meeting will be adjourned. Okay, um, Halima, could you? Okay, I, I guess I'll call the meeting to order at 6.07 tonight. Um, Halima, could you please do a roll call? Harvin Armadi, Sharon Bohoman. Present. Chanita Chu. Shanita Chu, you're on mute. Here, I'm sorry, here, present. Bruce Stoogie. Here. Rachel Factor. Daniel Leary. Here. Cindy Torres. Crystal Wang. Here. Nikki Winty and Michael Williams. Here. We have six present. That's what I counted to. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is public comments. Do we have anybody from the um, public that would like to um, speak, have a comment on something that's not on the agenda? I don't see any hands raised. Okay. Item number four on the agenda. Um, item on the, number four on the agenda is um, just a quick announcement. Um, if you notice in the agenda packet, um, there was a um, BPAC roster that was updated um, November 10, and um, there were three members who had not been attending the meetings, and um, they were um, removed from the. Um, from the roster. So now we have a membership of 10 and to um, achieve a quorum, we need uh, six. So we have that tonight. Uh, okay, I see uh, Roy Taylor has his hand, hand raised. I may have missed that, I don't know, um, during com um, the public comment. So let's go back to that item then, let's give him a chance to speak. Um, Roy, go ahead. Thanks, Amber. No, it was for comment on this topic. I think you take comments on each individual topic on the agenda. Um, the previous one was for items not on the agenda. Um, so I think good job in in kind of um, moving off the people that have never attended 
Uh, but now you're down to 10 members, but on your website, it still says the committee is supposed to be 15. So I'm wondering, can you comment on how you are intending to fill the other five slots? And if actually, if you are intending to do that, um, are you going to keep with the 10 that you have now? Um, but if I look at the 10 that you have now, it largely, uh, the BPAC seems to have turned largely into an interagency group meeting because there's a person from BART and there's a person from AC Transit and there's a, you know, a person from the city of Livermore. And it really is, there's really very little representation from actual members of the public in the community. So if you are going to fill the other five slots, um, I guess I'd encourage you to really look for individual members of the community um, versus representatives of, you know, agencies and associations. So thank you. Thanks. Um, I guess now, if there's no other comments, what did you have? Were you still trying to speak? Your hand is still up. Okay. So next item on the agenda is um, number five, reading and approval of minutes. Um, included in the agenda packet tonight is um, uh, are the two sets of minutes from June 23rd and September 22nd. Um, does anybody on the committee have any comments on those minutes? Anybody from the public have? Oh, is there a hand? Dan? I move for approval of the meeting minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Sharon Bahaman seconds. Okay, we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the June 23rd and September 22nd meeting. Halima, could you please conduct a roll call to um, get the vote? Arvin Amadi, Sharon Bohoman. Yay. Shanita Chu. Yes. Approved. Bruce Doogie. Yes. Rachel Factor. Daniel Leary. Yes. Cindy Torres. Crystal Wang. Yes. Nikki Winty and Michael Williams. Yes. We have six votes to approve the, the minutes. Oh. So the meeting minutes from um, June 23rd, 2022 and September 22nd, 2022 have been approved. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have um, two presentations tonight. The first one is gonna be by me. Um, and then we will have um, Bike Walk, Castro Valley and Castro Valley Matters. Um, I think Christine Tengen um, will be presenting um, some intersection um, improvement suggestions for Redwood Road and Maple Avenue, which is also um, my um, presentation tonight. So, so let me see, I'll have to share my screen in a second. You see my presentation on the screen? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, recently, um, Public Works performed the safety improvements evaluations at the intersection of Cashel Valley Boulevard and Santa Maria Avenue and Redwood Road at um, Maple Avenue. Um, I would like to share the consultant's findings and recommendations with you tonight. We'll start with the existing conditions at Cashel Valley Boulevard and Santa Maria Avenue. 
This intersection is located in downtown Cashel Valley. Cashel Valley Boulevard is an arterial roadway with posted speed limit of 30 miles per hour. And Santa Maria Avenue is a residential street with um, posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour. The south end of Santa Maria Avenue terminates at this T intersection. Redwood Road at um, Mabel Avenue is a four-legged intersection. The Mabel Avenue approaches on both sides of Redwood Road are offset about 35 feet from each other. Cashel Valley High School is located at the northwest corner of the intersection. Access to the school's parking lot is on Mabel Avenue just west of this intersection. Vehicle, bicycle, and pedestrian data were collected on Wednesday, September 28th during morning and afternoon peak periods at both intersections. Additional field observations were conducted between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. at the Castro Valley Boulevard and Santa Maria Avenue intersection. Then at 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. at the um, Redwood Road and Mabel Avenue intersection on September 29th. So um, these midday counts were collected on September 29th. The consultants also reviewed the collision histories to check if any trends or patterns may indicate a safety issue. There were 23 collisions reported at the Castro Valley Boulevard and Santa Maria intersection. This equates to a collision rate of 0.64 crashes per million vehicles entering the intersection. Out of the 23, one involved a pedestrian and another involved a cyclist. There were Eight collisions reported at the Redwood Road and Maple Avenue intersection. This equates to a collision rate of 0.2 crashes per million vehicles entering. No collisions were reported involving pedestrians or cyclists. And it was noted that due to the distribution of the different types of collisions and collision factors, there were no clear trends that were identified. At the Castro Valley Boulevard and Santa Maria Avenue intersection, the consultant observed some conflicts between the eastbound vehicles and northbound pedestrians using um, the crosswalk across Castro Valley Boulevard. Um, this map, I just added it to the presentation. It wasn't on the agenda package, but the um, text is the same. I just um, added this so that you guys can um, visualize what I'm describing. Um, so this is Santa Maria Avenue, and then this is Castro Valley Boulevard, north is up, okay? In one instance, downstream queues east of the intersection backed up into the study intersection. So vehicles queuing up, um, so the vehicles were queuing up within the intersection. This created a scenario where the driver on the um, inside lane, the lane closer to the median, could not see the pedestrians entering the crosswalk because of the vehicles in the outside lane. So as the pedestrians began to cross in front of the outside lane vehicle, the queue started to dissipate and then um, the driver in the inside lane began to move into the crosswalk while the pedestrian was still there. And then a separate observed incident involved one vehicle entering the intersection as the light turned red. And due to the leading pedestrian interval, um, the pedestrian who was waiting to cross received a walk signal um, just as the vehicle approached the crosswalk. There weren't um, any observed uh, conflicts between crossing pedestrians and the uh, southbound left turning vehicles, um, the vehicles coming out of Santa Maria Avenue. Um, however, with the um, existing five second leading pedestrian interval is reasonable to anticipate that this situation can happen when the drivers turn left um, out of Santa Maria Avenue into the inside lane of Castro Valley Boulevard. And then um, at the Redwood Road and Mabel Avenue intersection, the site observation took place on September 29th in the afternoon after school um, dismissal. And then as expected, there were a lot of pedestrian activities um, observed. There were no pedestrians crossing during um, the con any conflicting phase, nor were there any um, observed crossing diagonally through the intersection. But it was observed that cars would often block the crosswalk due to the queue building up um, from the downstream signals. So that's um, on Redwood Road. Um, and then more than once, a car stopped and blocked pedestrian access to the crosswalk, and then the pedestrians just walked around the stopped vehicle. 
So um, I wanted to note that um, this was like site observation on the 29th. On 29th. And then this table shows the number of pedestrians crossing diagonally at 15 minute intervals from data collected on September 28th, the day before. 31 pedestrians crossed diagonally between 815 and 830, and 19 pedestrians crossed diagonally between 315 and 330. And outside of those two 15 minute periods, nine pedestrians were observed um, crossing diagonally throughout the rest of the day. And our consultant noted that the pedestrian seems to cross diagonally when a vehicle was blocking the crosswalk. And then in those cases, the, um, the students would often choose to maneuver around the vehicle and then head toward the center of the intersection. So based on the data that was collected, uh, the collision histories at each intersection and then observations made during the site evaluations, potential improvements were evaluated based on their appropriateness and feasibility. At Castro Valley Boulevard and Santa Maria Avenue, increased all red clearance time, increased leading pedestrian interval length, and measures to increase the pedestrian visibility were evaluated. The, con the consultant recommended trimming bushes and shrubs and keeping them under three feet tall, and then any trees and hanging branches to be trimmed to a minimum height of seven feet and to consider placing keep clear pavement markings within the intersection to emphasize the need to keep out of the intersection for the drivers. And um, they also recommended implementing one and a half second all red clearance intervals to mitigate driver, drivers speeding through the intersection during a yellow or red light. And increasing the existing five second leading pedestrian intervals to six seconds for both pedestrian phases to allow pedestrians to better establish themselves within the um, roadway. At the Redwood Road and Mabel Avenue intersection, an exclusive pedestrian phase, also known as pedestrian scramble and increased all red clearance time were evaluated. An exclusive pedestrian phase would allow pedestrians to cross in all directions, including diagonally, while vehicles in all directions are stopped. It was calculated that um, the pedestrian scramble phase would have to be 39 seconds long because the diagonal crossing is 120 feet um, due to the offset geometry of Mabel Avenue. The consultant recommended that implement, uh, recommended implementing one and a half second uh, red clearance intervals and um, looking into whether improvements could be made to the upstream and downstream signals on Redwood Road to address the issues of drivers stopping in the crosswalk. They also suggested placing keep clear pavement markings within the intersection, just like the other one. And um, the pedestrian scramble was not recommended given the operational implications associated with this alternative. So yeah, that, that was the study that was done. And I will open it up for um, comments from the committee first, and then we'll go to public. We have a comment from Bruce Doogie. Yeah, I, I have a few comments. Um, thank you for the presentation, uh, Amber. Uh, so what, what uh, prompted this uh, um, analysis uh, at these two intersections? Uh, just curious. We were, I was kind of contacted by, um, by two, two people separate, separately. And then um, because they were both like kind of in Cashel Valley close to each other, I assigned them to one consultant and do them at the same time. Oh, okay, I'm just curious how these two particularly uh, these these two got highlighted um, for uh, investigation. But um, okay, um, the uh, so the the I'm glad that you're acknowledging or the the consultant acknowledged the issue on um, you know when I walk down south on Santa Maria, I often have a vehicle. You know I'm walking south through that um, crosswalk, and I often have a vehicle come right up to me. You know, taking that left-hand turn, just like you said. So I'm I'm glad that there's some thought to that, even though it's not um, 
uh, you know, they didn't observe that, the conflict, but I experienced that conflict quite a bit. So I think maybe changing that five second to six second uh, pen interval, is, that was the consultant's um, suggestion you're saying to- Yeah, to, to better, so that the pedestrians have a bit more time to um, position themselves within that crosswalk. And we already implemented that like last week, I think. Oh, okay. That's already implemented. Yeah, and increased the all red. The, the signals were taken care of last week at both intersections. I forgot to mention that. And, and I think what you'll see in the presentation, the next presentations, that we, we saw um, a lot more uh, diagonal crossing than what the consultant um, saw. I mean, mm -hmm. just in the short video that you're going to watch, there's probably 31, you know, just in that really short video. They just picked a couple of you know that had significant number of crossing so i'm not sure if if things have changed because this was done at the end of last school year so i'm not sure if if the you know somehow things changed but um i guess that's uh something we'll see later um i, I guess that's it for now uh, the, the other thing i do want to talk about is radiuses on the the corners and and maybe that's something that will I, i'll bring up for uh, uh further you know, topic agenda items, because because we have very, very large radiuses in uh, an incorporated area, and it really encourages high speed in the car, um, and it prioritizes the car speed over the safety of the pedestrian. So I'd love to see some tighter, you know, radiuses. And, um, oh, I know the other question I had, there, there's only three crosswalks in both of these intersections. So why is there only three crosswalks and not four? Three crosswalks. Yeah, so there's there's uh, there's a crosswalk missing on um, Castro Valley Boulevard on the west side of Santa Maria, and then there's uh, one missing on the um, across um, CV Boulevard, I guess north on the north part of the intersection. So um, that makes it a little more challenging for um, pedestrians, you know, and and. And that's part of why they, you know, do the, this diagonal crossing, you know, just, you know, makes it, uh, I'm just curious how, why there's only three crosswalks instead of four. Uh, that I'm not sure um, why it was designed that way. Um, typically at T intersections, they, we try to get them to cross at one location. I don't know, Dan, if you wanted to speak on that, you turn your camera off. And my, my light went off and I didn't oh. want to interrupt. I'm hearing some nice things. So I want to, I'll raise my hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why um, they were designed that way with um, with one crosswalk crossing um, Casual Alley Boulevard and Redwood Road. Because I see, I see that a lot. I think that's true even at Somerset and um, pretty much all of the intersections. <laughs> so I, I think it's a pretty common practice, but I was curious what the logic was. Okay, I guess that's it for, for me for now. Okay, thank you, Bruce. And I saw Crystal's hand raised for a while now, and then we'll go to you, Dan. Thank you. Um, yes, Crystal Wang representing AC Transit. Um, I just wanted to note that we're definitely supportive of safety improvements at these locations. Um, I also just wanted to note that we have transit service that passes through um, both of these intersections. And um, we just want to make sure that we always want to make sure that any safety improvements work well with transit operations. And none of the recommendations that you mentioned seem like they would be disruptive to transit operations. Um, but I just wanted to uh, note that as a reminder for when the recommended improvements are implemented and for future projects, um, that we'd appreciate as much advance notice as possible from the county. Um, whenever there's going to be work or construction on the street along a bus route so that we can better inform our riders and our operators when there's going to be detours um, and or stop closures. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Dan? Dan, you're muted. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, the easy one, I think, is the... Uh, Santa Maria Avenue, Cache Valley Boulevard. I completely agree with the recommendations. I, I really couldn't think of anything to add there on that one. Um, I'd like to pick up on a few things that uh, Mr. Doogie mentioned about 
Redwood Road and Mabel. And I don't know, if, Amber, if you could share that, the image of the intersection. Uh, Redwood and Mabel. It, it's, I think it was a site analysis one was the image of kind of a nice flat plan view. Oh, okay. Can I just um, share my, uh, I, I can share my presentation. screen. Also. Oh, I, I yeah, I meant the presentation. Yes, I meant the presentation. There was a nice, there's one slide that showed a plan view. So this is my Google Maps right now. Oh, yeah, perfect. Oh, even better. Yeah, yeah, this is better. With the, Let me know if you want street view or you want area. Yeah, view. street view. So um, I'm sorry, uh, maybe plan view. I, I apologize. Okay. Um, so the one thing that um, I wanted to add to what uh, Bruce said. So, you know, the, the issue, I think one of the problems is that the, the students crossing from the south east or the bottom right and kind of in a angling towards the top left right the northwest corner mm -hmm. and i think if the crosswalk was more attractive and a couple of things would the crosswalk that on the bottom there that crosses the south leg so if the corner were tighter on the bottom right the south east and you can get two ramps in there one thing that would do is you could move the crosswalk closer because students are they want to get there as soon as they can so if the crosswalk were even five feet by my tightening net radius there you get the double ramp uh, which is always a plus and um and just to add why there's three crosswalks that was kind of a preferred practice many years ago i think um yeah i remember when i was a young uh, younger they would talk about concentrating pedestrians so that that seemed to make sense at the time. I think now that it seems to practice is more towards um, four crosswalks in situations like this. Mm -hmm. But does that sound right to you? Um, sure, we could take a look at it. Yeah, I think that's sure. what it. Um, but on that crosswalk, so one thing, moving it even a few feet further north would help. And uh, you don't have to go to Street View, but I think everybody's aware that the, the receiving end of that ramp on the left-hand side or the west side where you see the yellow square, I mean, who would want to walk there? It's like there's chains and poles. And I mean, even a, a, a ninth grade would probably have trouble squeezing through there. So if that were, um, and I was even thinking you could probably even um, raise that, that half of the crosswalk to attract the students that way because the, the drainage goes, I believe, south on redwood and then it goes to the west on mabel so i don't even know if you'd have to add any catch basins to do that it might be a um a cost effective solution but the main thing is because that left turn is so long because of that horrible offset there's room to put a refuge island on both sides of the crosswalk in the middle on that same crosswalk so you're you're kind of in a way sort of maybe creating a little obstruction for the students to you know encourage them to stay straight you're moving it north a little bit and you're making the receiving end more attractive, they might more than the 31, less than 31 with jaywalk maybe. Um, and I was gonna point out also, there's a document, um, it's an older document, the Caltrans has this called Complete Intersections. It's a, but it has on, on I was noticing on figure 4.2, which is page 50, it, it talks about offset intersections and the challenge for pedestrians. It's called, Complete intersections is 2010, so it's it hasn't been updated, but it does show this exact kind of the situation on Figure 4.2 and Figure 4.7 in that document. It just and it doesn't add much to it, but it, it would show the four crosswalks. It shows um, it just gives you something to refer to if if, if you would, did decide to add um, some of these features. And I, but I do think that that one. Um, corner bottom right if you tighten that up that might help to make it more attractive for the pedestrians okay, thank you yeah we just recently um constructed a sidewalk um oh on redwood road so this this photo um plan view might be out yeah it should be out oh as this should be new sidewalk here and then we also have a project on maple avenue that's coming up from mm. um santa maria to redwood road to, okay. to, to the sidewalk on this side. Well, the, if they do, that you know that the the northwest corner with the slightly large radius, you can see there's parking on the Mabel side. So there's opportunity to bulb that out too. So that would shorten that, that and you'll see that in that figure four two and four seven that they're recommending a bulb out on that wherever there's parking, right? On the side streets, not not on 
you can't bulb out redwood, but you could bulb out onto the side, ex extend to the side. Mm -hmm. And those are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and um, Bruce's hands up again, so I don't see any. Other... Yeah, sorry. Um, can you put that picture back up? Because that's what triggered my hand again. <laughs> okay. I think um, getting back to that idea of three crosswalks versus uh, four, I think, um, uh, and I, again, you know, I, I, under, I understand that uh, concept that uh, Dan was saying about concentrating pedestrians, but now I think the theory is a little different. So we were um, putting, you know, uh, making, prioritizing cars over uh, pedestrians in the past, and now we're, we're trying to um, change that. And so we probably should have a fourth crosswalk. But the reason that the fourth crosswalk would be so good, that one on the north, is because um, the only reason that people are starting out, the students are starting out on the corner, the south um, east corner, is because that, that's the only place they can cross. Um, a lot of those students, they're just parking back in, in that uh, on Mabel. And some of them are parking on the north side and some of them are parking on the south side. And so they would all actually collect in, the, um, in that uh, north um, uh, east corner and they would just cross right there from the northeast corner to the, to the northwest corner and be on the campus. So, so they would be crossing probably mid block all throughout Mabel and, and the streets further back where there's hardly any uh, traffic. And then they would actually just do it in one fell swoop instead of walking diagonally. The reason they walk diagonally is, is, is because they wanna get, you know, like, like Dan said, to, to school. So the whole thing can be resolved, I believe, by simply putting a crosswalk, the one that's missing. And that crosswalk then, I don't think you will see any students crossing from the, from the south east corner. Yeah, nobody's gonna use that. They will all um, go up to the, um, the northeast corner and then they will walk around and take that crosswalk. And, and here's the other plus, because one of the things that we uh, uh, observe is, is what happens is some of these kids do cross um, from east to west straight and not diagonally. And then they walk around the corner and along Mabel and then they do a mid block cr uh, crossing. Exactly. And we've observed a number of those, uh, quite a few last year, fewer this year. And so um, if you allowed them to cross in that northern part of the intersection, then they would not be doing a mid-block crossing uh, on Mabel. And there's a lot of cars on Mabel at that time of day. So those mid-cross blockings are, are not you know, very good. So I think the whole thing can be resolved with a, um, by adding the third uh, or the fourth crosswalk, which should always have been there. And if, there, and if you are gonna concentrate the pedestrians, we picked the wrong direction this time. I, I don't know what the logic was for that, but, um, but, but the, now we know that we picked the wrong one. So if we do wanna just stick to three, it should be the Northern part, the Northern crossing, not the Southern crossing. And that's because the school is the main destination. And that's, that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Dan? That was interesting to, just to add to what he just said is, um, I think it is true if the fourth crosswalk were there, people tend to walk the easiest street first and then the harder street. So people might be doing that, as he described, cross Mabel first and then cross Redwood if they're coming from the east. So that might be the fix. Yeah, because I think right now they're they're already crossing Mabel to the south corner, right? Mid block. I mean, because some of them are parking on the north side. And so uh, if, if nobody collects at the north side and then crosses at the crosswalk. Yeah. So I think I think you're right. Thank you, Bruce and Dan. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, I don't see any hands raised for um, from the committee. We'll go to um, the public the attendees. And I see one hand, um, Roy Taylor. Go ahead. Thanks, Amber. I uh, appreciate you looking at those two spots and, and actually the comments from Mr. Leary. Appreciate those, very, very, very helpful. I was also interested though, into why you picked these particular two locations, which you actually explained, but um, 
if you are a pedestrian and you're used to walking around Castro Valley, I would probably point out at least 10 other locations that are equally uh, difficult to cross, uh, try crossing at Castro Valley Boulevard with Redwood Road, any direction in that intersection while you're crossing. There are always cars driving behind you, in front of you, um, down at Redwood and Grove, uh, Lake Chabot, Somerset and Lake Chabot, Centre and Castro Valley Boulevard, Castro Valley Boulevard down at Norbridge, Strawbridge. They all suffer from two problems. First, the right turn on red. The only way that a vehicle and everybody wants to make a right turn on red, the only way for the driver to get line of sight is to edge forward and be in the crosswalk. So when the light is on for you to cross, you have vehicles coming across the crosswalk in front of you because they won't wait. They're edging forward, trying to make that right turn on red all the time. And the second, um, I think, design issue is just in general. The very idea that the, you are going to create a space that's going to be shared between a vehicle and a person. Uh, personally, I just can't get my mind around that. That in a busy intersection, and Castro Valley is not like Sonol. Yeah, it's a very busy, very, very busy. Uh, in all these intersections, the very idea that you would say, we are going to create a space. And we are going to allow, I don't know what, what a car weighs, 30,000 pounds, somebody's going to correct me on that, yeah, but a very, very heavy vehicle moving at you know, 20, 25 miles an hour. We are going to create a shared space that is supposed to be equally shared between a vehicle and a person. I mean, my mind just boggles at the very idea of that, to be honest. And so in these busy areas, you know, the downtown area, you know, I would section off all of downtown Castro Valley from Center Street all the way down to uh, the Norbridge, you know, area, uh, the whole downtown area. I would stick a pin in the middle of every school and draw a radius of pick, pick a distance, half a mile, third of a mile around every school. And I would simply just say, have a simple rule. No turn on red and never have the light to cross and allow vehicles to be, you know, uh, driving through the intersection at the same time. And I think you would, you know, greatly improve safety for pedestrians just by implementing two simple rules. The numbers that you have when you say, oh, there was only one accident, that doesn't account for all the facts that when you're crossing, there are near misses. None of those get recorded. And I walk my dog every day. I run almost every day down those streets. And I would say that probably 30 or 40 percent of the time when I am crossing, I have to stop crossing when I actually have the right of way to allow a vehicle to go. And your numbers aren't counting those. But those are accidents that pedestrians prevented from happening by giving up their right of way. So I don't think you can really read a lot into your numbers, actually, in terms of that, the numbers being the reason to make changes. Um, and then some of the recommendations, increasing the uh, light time from five seconds to six seconds. That doesn't sound like an awful lot. One extra second. I'm not quite sure what distance a pedestrian can cover in one second, but it certainly doesn't sound like a big accommodation at all to add one second. So, you know, maybe you could look at that as well, but thank you. I don't see any other hands raised in, oh. Okay, um, Bruce? Yeah, I just wanna to respond to Roy. I think that's a good point, what he talks about by having a, a car scheduled and a pedestrian scheduled at the same time. Um, you know, of course we know what happened uh, uh, at Redwood, uh, sorry, on uh, uh, Crow Canyon, right? We had a, a, a student uh, die there because it was, uh, they, they both had a green light. So um, like, like you said, we're, we're prior to prioritizing cars, right? By allowing them to go at the same time that a pedestrian is allowed to go. So if we're, if we're serious about safety, we would stop doing that. Thanks. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, if um, there are no other comments on um, this presentation, um, I'm gonna go to the next um, presentation. Um, we have...
Christine Tengen from um, Bike Wall Cashel Valley and Cashel Valley Matters. She's also going to talk to us about um, Railwood Road and Maple Avenue. Thanks, Amber. Hi, and thanks for the opportunity. I, I am Christine Tengen with uh, Cashel Valley Matters. Uh, just by way of quick, quick background, uh, we did partner recently with Bike Walk CG uh, to host a um, community pedestrian and bicycle safety training. Uh, that was run by Cal Walks and UC Ber Berkeley Safe Track team. Um, we looked at a lot of safety issues on the three routes that we reviewed. Of course, anything centered, centered around a school uh, became a, a high focus for all the participants. And so that is why uh, we did um, focus initially here on at uh, Mabel and the Redwood. Um, so let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm, Amber, you've already hit on a lot of the, um, and you're consulting a lot of the um, items that are on our slides here. So I'm gonna go click quickly through them and then we can get to the short video that we have that uh, really better demonstrates uh, the safety issues that we saw. Uh, so we already talked about, you know, the, just be, the heavy uh, commute traffic here, both by students and vehicles and, and there only being three crosswalks. Um, we also note that they, there are some restricted right turns now and some adjusted traffic lights uh, that allow uh, pedestrian use of multiple crosswalks during the same traffic interval. Uh, our site study, as Bruce mentioned, uh, we did it uh, towards the end of May uh, of the last school year. And um, our findings are that there remains, still remains some very serious safety concerns regarding the conflict here between pedestrians and drivers. Um, these are just a chart that we uh, use for our bike ped counts uh, and additional observations. Um, you can see that in the first couple of green columns, the pedestrian use of Mabel and Redwood at this intersection during student commute times is uh, quite high. For some reason, we can't see the chart. Yeah, we can't. Oh, oh, there goodness. it goes. <laughs> ah, that's an interesting delay. Okay, so uh, first couple of columns and our pedestrians. Um, and, and we noted, you know, more than a few instances, as did Amber's consultant about motorists blocking the crosswalks. We also saw quite a few uh, We lost you, Christine. Can you hear us, Christine? The two 45 minute sessions that we saw. And that was morning only. We didn't actually observe the diagonal crossings in the afternoon. No, um, we, we lost you for part of that. So we're not, not sure where we where you left off. Oh, okay. Um, what was the last piece you heard? Uh, you're talking about, um, I think the just mentioned the diagonal crossings or something like that, or? Uh, well, we did, yeah, so we uh, noticed quite a few more diagonal crossings than did the consultant, um, but only during the morning times. And you see those here in the second green column. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, so that was the most concerning uh, behavior that we saw. Okay. I'm bringing up the last slide now where we're going to show you a quick you know, less than five minute video. Uh, to demonstrate these hazards a little bit more clearly and also show some evidence of the mid-block crossings at on Mabel right in front of the high school that are also of concern. Is the, uh, is the slide showing now with the video? Yeah. I'm, I'm about to pop it, so okay. We'll go full screen. Okay, um, before I run that, this does not have any audio, but the caption should um, I don't see it myself.
Different day. See, there's conflict with those left turners. So that's that. We we're hoping uh, it was under five minutes, but there's a lot there. Hoping to get some more feedback from the, the BPAC. Um, we like the consultant's um, suggestion of a, of a scramble, um, but we really want to hear what everyone has to say. Bruce's hands up. Bruce, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to note that there were no pedestrians at the northeast corner. Um, so that's kind of like uh, reinforcing that idea, that fourth crosswalk um, that the students consolidate uh, to the southeast uh, corner to cross diagonally. And so if they had the option to collect at the northeast corner, then they would just take a straight shot. And that would get rid of some of those uh, mid-block crossers, but not all of them, because some of those mid-block crossers are being dropped off mm -hmm. on the south side of um, Mabel. And so, um, you know, it does seem like we should maybe consider some kind of a crosswalk mid-block on Mabel. Um, but uh, it's, but I, it just seems to me, more the more I think about it, that that fourth, um, that fourth crosswalk is is um, going to solve quite a few of these problems, and uh, you know, just it's just something I thought of today as we were going through these presentations. But I, I just think that's something we should pursue. Yeah, that's it. Dan, go ahead. And the 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 scramble crosswalk crossing 
might be ideal given what we just saw in the video. And thank you very much for the video. Appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the stuff that we saw was pretty, um, I mean, pretty much what you just saw. This is pretty intense and pretty heavy. I didn't even know students were parking over in that part of town. Um, but obviously, they're parking over there and then walking across. That's, that's what's happening. So anyway. I see that Sharon has her hand raised. Yeah, I was just going to agree. I think that it, it appears after seeing the video, the scramble crossing, um, because it looks like the main direction that they're walking diagonally from is from that um, southwest corner. I, you know, it's, it's so that seems to be a place where they're most prominently walking diagonally across um, the intersection. So it seems like a scramble would um, solve a lot of um, that challenge. Michael Williams. Uh, yeah, this might be just for my benefit, but can you just briefly go over the scramble? Now that I've seen the video, it helps you know to have some context. Can you now go over the scramble uh, option again? Just uh, maybe someone else needs it too, but um, I, it's more helpful for me now that I understand I've got the directions and everything laid out because I'm not familiar with the intersection, so I had to you know like learn it all from scratch, kind of. So um, the pedestrian scramble was actually not recommended at this time from um, our consultant because of the um, implications to um, to the level of service at the um, at the, this intersection, the delays that it will cause because it would be like um, no matter what time of day it would just be um, set to have the the pedestrian scramble where no no um, vehicles would be able to enter the intersection. I had a couple of comments. Um, so there's a pedestrian scramble on uh, Bancroft at the San Leandro High School, which is a really good example. Um, so Michael, just so you know what a, a scramble is, is it stops all of the traffic in all directions, so all four directions, and then it allows the pedestrians to cross however they want. So they have a, a diagonal crosswalks and all four um, crosswalks and and you see this uh, often in in cities like uh, that Chinatown in Oakland has a couple of them and and then the more you're starting to see them in the more suburban environments like in uh, San Leandro for the the high school and uh, but I think um, it doesn't have to operate all day long you know you can set up uh, the light schedule I assume to uh, you know work uh, right before school and right after school because um, that's when most of the you know, people are walking diagonally, but you're never going to stop the students from walking diagonally because that's, that is the most efficient, easy way to do it. And, but you see conflicts, you see people turning left to go south. Uh, so from Mabel turning left to go south on, on um, uh, the Redwood and also people going straight across Mabel. And, and that's a, definitely a conflict. There's not a lot of traffic on that side um, so, so they, you know, the risk is, uh, I guess, uh, fairly low, but, but that's the one, um, part that is, um, an issue, I guess. Again, it can all be resolved by having the fourth crosswalk. So, um, you don't need a scramble if you have the fourth crosswalk because, because people won't walk diagonally. Okay. That's helpful. Thanks. Yeah. I, I don't see any more hands um, about this item. Committee, nothing. Okay, thanks. well, thank you so much, Christine, for, for joining us and um, for your presentation. Yeah, thanks for the comments and the feedback and um, we'll continue to follow up then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so last on our agenda is um, future agenda topics. If um, anybody has any suggestions, we'll go to um, the committee first and, and then we'll go to um, public to see. Go ahead, Bruce. 
Yeah, I would like to talk about these um, corner radiuses and uh, how we can tighten them up. I think um, that will, you know, I experience while I'm cycling, I experience pretty frequently um, people that pass me on the left so they can just get in front of me to, to go super fast and make a right-hand corner, right, or, you know, right-hand turn right in front of me. And that's all enabled by these really uh, large radiuses. I had a, a kind of a close incident just the other day going up Redwood Road, and they were, um, you know, uh, passed me and did a, a right hook right in front of me uh, at the, um, you know, where the adult school is. I forgot the name of that street. But um, so I think these uh, radiuses are something that we should talk about in the future. And, and that tight radius, is, um, as Dan mentioned, would enable the double um, that would also help uh, enable these double um, pedestrian ramps, which are what our um, you know bike plan, bike pedestrian uh, plan calls for, calls for double pedestrian ramps and tighter radiuses. But we keep installing these really large radiuses, um, and then I think we we've already talked about uh, like you mentioned something. I, I think we're, we were going to do um, uh, bike boxes, right? Is a, another one. Um, and then, you know, the double versus single ramp is uh, another one that I guess it ties into this radius thing. Um, and, um, and maybe um, another thing I would like to talk about is the level of uh, stress. You know, we took that class about, um, you know, uh, designing bikeways, and uh, there's a thing called level of stress, and there's, uh, uh, I forgot the there's a professor who created this, um, this way to calculate level of stress um, by how many cars are going by, by how uh, wide the, the, the street is, how many lanes there are of traffic and all that kind of thing. And I think we should map um, our, our unincorporated area and, um, and show what the level of stress is. And, and, and then we should work on reducing that level of stress for, you know, to get people out on their bicycles, because we know that we need to reduce driving. And, um, and one of the ways that we can do that is to promote um, cycling and to promote uh, pedestrians. And so um, that would be great, because what that level of stress map shows is that our, our you know, it, it'll, it'll either vindicate our present bike plan or, or show that our present bike, bike plan is not very good. Um, but so that's another one. And then um, uh, maps, I, I would like to talk about uh, like pr producing some kind of maybe from this uh, body, we can produce some kind of maps. Um, they're one of the sheriffs, um, uh, Alameda County sheriffs. Uh, uh, they talk, he said uh, he lived in San Francisco and he talked about these what he, they called wiggle maps in uh, San Francisco. So these are all the little sort of uh, back ways that um, cyclists uh, could take to have a lower stress uh, uh, path to where they were wanting to go. And um, I think we should create some wiggle maps maybe for the schools to get to the schools. Uh, so that would be a great thing for this um, group to do and, and show that, uh, I know I have a couple of wiggles that I do now um, I, I stopped taking Somerset, for example, because it's way too stressful. If I can avoid it, then I don't do it. So now I actually take a wiggle and it, it causes me uh, extra elevation and it causes me extra miles. But that's what I do now. I'm a little frustrated that I have to do that, but that, that's what I do. And so to get to like Lake Chabot from the high school. And so that wiggle is, um, you know, we should publish that wiggle. And, uh, and let people know that um, it's out there and there's other wiggles too. So wiggle maps, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Um, okay, I uh, don't see any hands from any other committee members for future agenda items. Um, so, okay. Um, the time is now 7.06 and the meeting is adjourned. The next meeting will be on Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. And we'll send out the agenda before the meeting. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a good evening and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.